Hey, this is Wes Fryer. It's March the 15th, 2023, and I'm here in the National Cemetery in Salisbury, North Carolina, where there are hundreds and hundreds of United States servicemen buried. And um, I actually noticed this as I was leaving the uh, VA clinic that's here in, in Salisbury. Um, and then I've actually just made a video. There's a, um, a cemetery, a, a, a burial ground for African Americans that is just beside the National Cemetery over there that was used from the mid 1800s until I think 1960. Um, and then there's a school here that was called the Colored School and then renamed the Lincoln School. That was the first school for African American children uh, here in Salisbury. Um, I'm going to actually walk over here to one of the older plots because um, I was wondering if there might be any uh, folks from the Civil War buried here, any soldiers from the Civil War, and there are, so um, I'm going to walk over there. Many of these are, you know, relatively recent, um, you know, graves, days, uh, years of death, 94, 2003, 1994 seems recent to me. So this is a, it's the most prominent monument here at the Salisbury National Cemetery and it is erected to Pennsylvania soldiers in the Civil War who were prisoners of war here in Salisbury and were buried just beside this monument. I'm gonna walk inside and read the inscription that is carved into um, metal inside. This monument is erected by authority of an act of the Pennsylvania legislature approved June 13, 1907 to commemorate the patriotic devotion, heroism, and self-sacrifice of the officers and soldiers of the Pennsylvania volunteers who died while confined as prisoners of war in the Confederate military prison at Salisbury, North Carolina during the War of the Rebellion and were interred among the unknown Union soldiers and sailors in the 18 trenches at the southeast side of this monument. A grateful Commonwealth renders this tribute to their honor and memory. Many Pennsylvania soldiers are buried here. They were citizens of a state whose founders came across the sea and established a Commonwealth where all men would be equal and under just laws, free to enjoy their unalienable, inalienable rights in the pursuit of happiness, unmolested by king or noble or prejudiced class. They used the sword only to preserve the peace and unity of their country, Twice on the soil of their state were crucial struggles for the Republic, first at Valley Forge that tested the courage and fortitude of the Patriot Army, then at Gettysburg that proved the nation could not be broken, respecting the example of the Romans who never raised emblems of, emblems of triumph over a foe. The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania erects this monument to perpetuate the memory of the dead and not as a commemoration of victory. Their memory cannot be forgot. Forever shall men's hearts revere their loyalty and hold this spot sacred because they perished here. So, I am now in the oldest part, I think, of the Salisbury National Cemetery. Um, this is a monument from the state of Maine for the soldiers from Maine in the, in the Civil War, the U.S. Civil War, which uh, died in the prisoner of war camp that was here in Salisbury. So I'm going to walk around a little bit and read some of the inscriptions on the monument and on some of the plaques that are here. It says Maine on all four sides. Dorico, Maine. Maine's tribute to her soldiers who died while prisoners of war at Salisbury, North Carolina, 1864 to 1865. One country, one flag. They fought for peace. For peace they fell. 
They sleep in peace and all is well. To live in hearts we leave behind is not to die. And this is a monument dedicated to all of the unknown soldiers that are buried here. And all of these gravestones are marked unknown U.S. soldier. And these are trenches where the soldiers were buried. And this is what the plaque says about Civil War Salisbury. Salisbury was a vital location, and the Confederate government invested heavily in the city. Early in the war, an auxiliary ordnance installation was established here. The converted factory became Salisbury Arsenal, and it produced munitions, guns, and artillery. In addition, the Confederates built hospitals, warehouses, and a distillery. The city housed the NIDER and Mining Bureau the, and Commissary Department District Headquarters. Finally, the Confederacy established a prisoner of war camp in Salisbury, where thousands of Union soldiers were held until it was abandoned in February 1865. Union authorities also recognized Salisbury's strategic importance. In spring 1865, Union General George Stoneman and 6,000 Cavalry rode into North Carolina. On April 12th, Stoneman attacked Salisbury. The Federals defeated the Confederate force of 800 and captured the city. Then they destroyed the railroad track and anything of use in a fire that burned for two days. Salisbury National Cemetery was established in 1865 around the old prison burial ground. By 1874, it occupied seven acres. In addition to the prisoners, 425 soldiers were buried here in individual graves. 92 were known. In the 1870s, the cemetery was enclosed with a stone wall. The entry features ornate iron gates cast with iconic military symbols. The original Second Empire-style lodge built for the superintendent was replaced in 1934 with the current Dutch colonial-style building. There are two state Civil War monuments here. The main monument, erected in 1908, honors its soldiers who died while imprisoned at Salisbury. The 25-foot-tall granite monument features a statue of a Union soldier and polished ornamental cannon. In 1910, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania funded construction of a 32-foot-tall memorial pavilion. It is topped by an 8-foot-tall bronze prisoner of war to honor its volunteer soldiers who perished here. The Pennsylvania members of the National Association of the Ex-Prisoners of War organization were inspired by the New Jersey monument that they saw at George's Andersonville National Cemetery. As a result, the Pennsylvania government donated monuments to national cemeteries at Andersonville and Salisbury. It also paid the travel expenses of more than 100 former prisoners to attend the Salisbury dedication ceremony. From the Bivouac of the Dead by Theodore O'Hara. The muffled drum's sad roll has beat the soldier's last tattoo. No more on life's parade shall meet that brave and fallen few. On fame's eternal camping ground, their silent tents are spread. And glory guards with solemn round the bivouac of the dead. This is a map erected by the United Daughters of the Confederacy in October 1992. This shows the burial prison, the, the sorry, the burial trenches and Salisbury prison. You are facing the 18 trenches used by the Salisbury Confederate prison for the burial of prisoners, most of whom died after October 1864. And so you can see here these are and I think I saw in the in the grave locator of a, a, a grave for slot three which is here we're gonna walk over there in just a little bit <clears throat> Salisbury National Cemetery Salisbury Prison was established by the Confederate government in October 1861 on the site of an old cotton factory. In preparation for the first prisoners, a portion of the grounds was enclosed by a stockade fence designed to hold about 2,500 persons. The prison was intended for Confederate soldiers who had committed military offenses and prisoners of state. However, the first Union soldiers arrived in December from Richmond, Virginia in an effort to reduce the number of prisoners of war there. 
During the early years of the war, prisoners at Salisbury were provided adequate shelter, rations, water, and sanitation, but all that changed on 5 October 1864 when 5,000 POWs were transferred to the prison. By the end of the month, more than 10,000 men were incarcerated at Salisbury. Overwhelmed by a population four times larger than intended, prisoners were quartered in every available space. Those without shelter dug burrows in an attempt to stay warm and dry. Rations and potable water were scarce. Adding to the poor conditions was an unusually cold and wet winter. Disease and starvation began to claim lives, and all buildings within the stockade were converted to hospitals to care for the sick. Each morning, the dead were gathered from the grounds and placed in the dead house. Later, they were removed for burial in trench graves located in a cornfield west of the prison. Though there are no complete burial lists for the prison and no head headboards were used to mark the graves, records indicate approximately 3,700 men died between October 1864 and February 1865. Surviving prisoners were released at the end of February when a POW exchange was carried out. Union forces burned down the prison in April of 1865. And this picture is labeled Bird's Eye View of Confederate Prison Pen at Salisbury, North Carolina, taken in 1864 by C.A. Krause, 1886, J.J. Buford Sons Lithography Library of Congress. And then this is the Unknown Soldiers Monument, which is right here. They died that their country might live. After the war, the Office of the Quartermaster General worked to locate the graves of Union soldiers. National cemeteries were established and bodies removed from battlefields and other locations to these hollowed grounds. Inspection reports from 1866 to 69 record 13 to 18 trenches present at Salisbury. Early speculation as to the number of dead ranged from 1,800 to more than 10,000. Because there was not a comprehensive list of the dead, the government decided to erect a monument to commemorate the soldiers who died at the prison and place, unknown markers at the ends of the trenches. During this time, the Army began reporting an estimated 11,700 burials based on limited trench excavations. The number was ultimately inscribed on the memorial, however, based on earlier documentation and the death figures from 1864-65 when the prison population peaked, a much lower number is likely. Lorenzo Deming, Medical, Medal of Honor recipient. Lorenzo Deming, Landsman, U.S. Navy, served on board the U.S. Picket Boat No. 1 in action 27 October 1864 against the Confederate ironclad Albemarle, which resisted repeated attacks by Union naval vessels. The picket boat, equipped with a spar torpedo, passed the enemy pickets and made for the Albemarle. Albemarle. Under fire, the small boat plunged on, jumped a log boom that encircled the vessel, and exploded its torpedo under the port bow. The picket boat was destroyed, and most of the crew of 15 was either taken prisoner or drowned. Deming is recorded as entering Salisbury Prison and dying there in February 1865. He is presumed to be buried in the trench graves. A memorial marker was erected in the Deming plot at Fairview Cemetery in New Britain, Connecticut in 1991, where there is also a large private memorial commemorating his service. The Medal of Honor, the highest award for military valor that can be bestowed upon a person in the U.S. Armed Services was created during the Civil War. In December 1861, President Abraham Lincoln signed legislation authorizing medals of honor to be bestowed upon sailors and Marines who shall distinguish themselves by their gallantry in action and other seaman-like qualities during the present war. A similar bill authorizing medals for non-commissioned officers and privates in the Army was passed 12 July 1862, the medal pictured is the style awarded to Navy and Marine Corps personnel between 1862 and 1912. Such a medal was bestowed upon Deming's shipmates after they were released from prison in March 1865, and Deming's medal was sent to his widow. In 18 trenches just south of this spot rest the bodies of 11,700 soldiers of the United States Army who perished during the years 1864 and 1865 while held by the Confederate military authorities as prisoners of war in a stockade near this place. And these are those trenches. The country reflected upon the Civil War's human toll. Two percent of the U.S. population died. Memorials honoring war service were built in national cemeteries. Most were dedicated, donated by regimental units, state governments, and veterans organizations, such as the Grand Army of the Republic. Decoration Day, later Memorial Day, was a popular patriotic spring event that started in 1868. Visitors placed flowers on graves and monuments.
students had gathered around rostrums to hear speeches. Construction of Civil War monuments peaked in the 1890s by 1920, as the number of aging veterans was dwindling. More than 120 monuments have been placed in the national cemeteries. Wow, so this was quite an unexpected uh, detour in my day today, but what a poignant reminder of the sacrifices made by so many men and women, soldiers, sailors, Marines, airmen, um, throughout the years um, in, the, in the service of our nation. Uh, as we find ourselves polarized and angry, and I think in some cases confused about what patriotism means um, and how important it is that we work together to make this nation a better place. It's a good place to visit. Behind me are the trenches of the unknown soldiers buried here from many northern states held in 1864 and 1865 during the United States Civil War, confined here in Salisbury, North Carolina, and buried here in graves marked for unknown soldiers.